and welcome to The Mummy's Hand 1940 Movie Review. And uh, this film here had a budget of 84,000 US dollars, and I could not find how much it made back in the box office. And if any of you know exactly how much this made in the box office, just let me know down in the comments below. That would be really awesome. Thanks, guys. And um, either way, this film was planned to only have an $80,000 budget, and turned out they went $4,000 over budget for, to make this film, which is kind of interesting. It turned out very well, actually. Um, the director is Christy Caban. I'm pretty sure I am butchering that. Um, I do apologize. Uh, he's made such films as Scared to Death in 1947, Graft in 1931, The Lost House in 1915, and he made so many more. Um, as I was going through his films, I noticed he made a lot of um, Western-type films. And he has some other uh, like horror-based type films that are there too, but he's made quite a lot, guys. Now, uh, the actors in this film is Tom Tyler. He plays Karis, and who is the mummy. It's no longer Boris Karloff. And I didn't mind Tom Tyler as the mummy. He didn't do it too bad of a job, but I really still like Boris Karloff the best. And then, like I said, Lon Chaney Jr. is the second best mummy, which continues on to the next film, who is playing the mummy is Lon Chaney Jr. I will get to that in the next mummy review. Now, the next person here is Dick Foran. He plays Steve Banning. He's a pretty cool, uh, level-headed character in this film. Uh, he has a buddy uh, named Babe Jensen, who is played by Wallace Ford. And them two together have such a great chemistry. Um, their scenes make me yeah, laugh all the time. They are like comic relief through this. Uh, I found this film more of like a comedy a bit than a horror film. But uh, all in all, they did a really good job. Now, they also have Cecil Kellaway. He plays the great Salvani, and he is a magician. And he has his daughter with him, who is played by Peggy Moran, and she is known as Marta Salvani. And uh, she's kind of like a hothead type thing, and uh, she plays her role very well. Now, this film here is not based on a sequel to Boris Karloff's The Mummy, from 1932, uh, but they did start an entirely new uh, kind of franchise with this, and um, I didn't mind that. You know, they kind of went their own way, and um, either way, um, for the overview, um, in Cairo, uh, archaeologist Steve Banning, which is played by Dick Foran, uh, he ends up buying a vase, and he believes that it could lead him to an ancient tomb of the Princess Inaka, so he ends up... Uh, bringing it over to uh, his professor, um, Andoheb, and he's played by George Zuko. And either way, uh, he is also a high priest of Karnak, of the, the area, and he holds secrets of Karis. Now, uh, Karis is a mummy who guards uh, Anaka's tomb. And um, either way, upon uh, receiving funds from the magician Silvani, um, and his daughter, of course. Uh, Steve and Silvani, they embark on an expedition to the gravesite where Karis happens to be waiting. And um, there's also, like, uh, some really funny moments in here, guys. Like, uh, before they teamed up uh, uh, with Silvani, um, Dick Foran and, and Wallace Ford, uh, Steve Banning and Babe Jensen, before they teamed up with uh, Silvani and his daughter, uh, there was a cool scene that I really liked. It was a bar scene, and um, Babe Jensen, he's like a con man, and he's and he's doing some card tricks, and he tried to pull a card trick on the Great Sylvani. He didn't know that he was a magician, and um, the Great Sylvani ended up pulling a trick on him, which kind of blew his mind, and they ended up talking afterwards, buying each other drinks. Uh, once they were kind of out of drinks, they were sitting at a table, and um, they're like, we got to call the waiter over, and... Um, the great Sylvani said, nah, nah, we don't have to call a waiter. And he grabbed uh, Babe's hand, and it's a little shot glass type thing, and he put his finger into the shot glass, and it filled up the shot glass. And I thought that was a very cool effect that they did for that time. I know that they hid the thing beside his finger or whatnot to make it fill up, but they did a very good job, and uh, I thought it was pretty cool for that time. 
Now, also, there's a beggar in this film, and you think he's a regular beggar at first, but finding out, uh, he ends up working for the professor, and the professor, um, when uh, Steve Banning shows the professor this broken vase and what's on it and where it could lead, he ends up breaking it on purpose, and you can tell, and he's like, ah, oh, excuse me, you know? And uh, you could tell it was a very dick move and that he did it on purpose, but for some reason it didn't uh, pan on, uh, on Steve Banning that he did this on purpose. Either way, after they did leave, uh, like Steve Banning and Bay Jensen, after they left the professor's uh, office, um, the beggar ended up coming in and you find out that the beggar is working for the professor and the beggar keeps an eye on these two guys, Steve Benning and Babe Jensen. And um, basically it was a fun ride all around, guys. I really did enjoy this. Um, I found the music score in this film actually went very well with this film. Um, they weren't even off at some points. It just kept going straight on. And um, I love that. I really do. I find if there's no good music score... Uh, sometimes the film kind of falls apart because to me a music score gets me into the scene uh, depending on the filming you know uh, slasher films or whatever you have that moment where you have that kind of music and you know what's about to happen the killer's either there or whatever and same for haunted movies or whatever they all have their specific type of sound and uh, I love that if they didn't have that it'd be weird I think um, either way uh, what I really liked about this film is that um, they went uh, with their own imagining, like a reimagining of The Mummy from 1932, and I found there was a bit more kills in this film, actually. I think there's maybe one or two more kills in this one, more than the original, but um, still there was more kills, and I kind of liked that as well. Uh, the Mummy was more movable, though, in this one. Uh, he wasn't so stiff, which I kind of liked as well. Um, but Boris Karloff, he really pulled it off. I, I really liked him in, as the mummy. I like him as everything that he is. Um, now, would I recommend it? Well, but of course, guys, uh, check this one out if you haven't already. Um, it is a fun watch. It's not as great as the original from 1932, but it's pretty close, and I really do enjoy this one. Um, I do prefer um, the mummy's tomb a little bit more than this one. But uh, it's still very good, this film. Now, either way, that's going to be it for this review, guys. Thanks for your time. Uh, there will be a trailer at the end of this video. Um, you all take care and enjoy. Ciao. Say, I think you're a swell person. Hmm? You're very beautiful. So beautiful, I'm going to make you immortal. Hey, where's uh, the girl? Well, you'll never see her again. I'll give you a treat to tell me where she is. I'm not kidding. If you were to kill me, you're leaving at large a monster that only I can control. Uh...